So let's look at the, the two areas which to a great extent have been separate uh, and here a large number of terms in the field which, which are used in the field of adaptation, adaptation studies, uh, adaptation appropriation, recontextualization, tradaptation, spin-offs, reduction, simplification, condensation, abridgment, special versions, reworkings, offshoots, transformations, remediations, revisions. We can add a lot more. We can add, add those terms of road uh, de campus like uh, transcriação, translucifiração, etc., etc. The whole uh, terminological area in adaptation studies is a uh, confusing area, to say the least. Right. Let's very briefly look through, through uh, certain definitions, and I'm using uh, Julie Sanders, Dryden to a certain extent. Adaptation usually contains omissions, rewritings, maybe additions, but will still be recognized as the work of the original author. We can compare this with Dryden's paraphrase. The original point of enunciation remains. Appropriation, again following Julie Sanders, the original point of enunciation may now have changed, and although certain characteristics of the original may remain, the new text will be more that of the adapter or rewriter, very similar to Dryden's imitation. I'm looking at translation from the interlingual point of view, maybe intersemiotic, as in uh, film subtitling. A number of books have been published in the area of uh, translation and adaptation. I can mention theatrical translation, film adaptation, practitioner's viewpoint, uh, multilingual Matters, Philip, Phyllis Zatlin. Again, uh, Multilingual Matters, the translation of children's literature, a reader, edited by Julian Le Lethe, uh, together with Marie-Hélène Torres of the uh, Universidad de Santa Catarina, Federal de Santa Catarina. I did a uh, collection of essays, Traducción, Translation, Retranslation, and Adaptation. Uh, Cadernos de Traducción number 11 in 2003. Moving target, theater translation, cultural relocation. So there is, there is quite a, a, a considerable bibliography, bibliography in the area. Different types of adaptation in translation studies, localization, children's literature, theater texts, work I and others have done on translation for mass markets, adaptations for the hard of hearing, film subtitles, especially for the hard of hearing, certain amount of work on uh, songs, both popular and opera. Certain constraints which will require that the texts be adapted. Target audience, age, talking about children's literature, background, disability, I mentioned the hard of hearing now, commercial factors, in his essay on uh, Brecht in the United States, uh, published in Translation Studies Reader, Andre Lefebvre mentions the use of orchestra in the, U in the US version of, uh, stage version of Mother Courage, uh, uh, the number of songs, the amount of time given to songs had to be reduced in order, to cut, in order so that the production did not have to use a full orchestra. A number of pages in the Club du Livre uh, adapted versions of classical literature I looked at, the number of pages was in almost all cases reduced to 160 in order to cut costs. Change of names, we can look at political elements, can mention the study Michel Garneau's politicized Macbeth in Quebec. We can look at uh, Lady Gregory's uh, Kakalan, studied in detail by Maria Timoshko, Michael Cronin. In the study of the Clubidou Livro adaptations I looked at, I found that in general, sexual elements, scat scatological elements, political elements, and moral elements were cut or softened. Language, songs, language pairs, for example, uh, Translators of songs into Portuguese try to avoid the own sound uh, in accented syllables. Historical factors, and I, I need hardly mention, uh, I need hardly go into detail about the Belle Enfidel. 
Well, the theoretical basis, of course, this is, I need not go into even Zohar, Turi, Lefebvre, Vermeer, and others, which for many of us are the basis of theoretical studies in translation studies. Let's move over to an area which perhaps some people like myself until a few months ago had little fam fam familiarity with, adaptation studies, which are often intersemiotic and intralingual. On occasions they may be interlingual. A typical study, and I'll give some examples in a few minutes, will be a book, to play, to film, to opera, or combinations, or maybe book to book. We find a large number of adaptations and appropriations of Shakespeare and the other greats. And we find adaptation studies extremely popular in departments of theater studies, film and media studies, music studies, cultural studies, and those departments of English literature which still exist. I'm talking about my, my, my knowledge of the UK. I'd be very interested to know about other countries. Let's look at the articles in a journal which was founded last year, the Journal of Adaptation in Film and Performance 1.1. Let's look at the articles in this journal. One article on the Merchant Ivory film version of The Golden Bowl, again following uh, book to film, book to film to play, to opera, etc. Another study on Nikolai Leskov's novella, A Lady Macbeth of the Intensk District, which of course is an appropriation of elements of Macbeth, 1865, to Shostakovich's Shostakovich's opera Lady Macbeth of Ntensk, then to the film of the opera by Shapiro in 67. We find another article by a Brazilian scholar working in Britain on a proposal for a translation of Calabar by the songwriter turned novelist Chico Buarque and Rui Guerra. Circus shows based on Uncle Tom's Cabin in the 19th century. And the final article, a Newcastle, yes, Newcastle version of Wim Wenders' Wings of Desire, locating in the fashionable northeastern English city of Newcastle. Burning Sorry? Burning Coals. Uh. Burning Coals, uh, uh, Coals to Newcastle, yeah. yeah. I don't think, I think the Newcastle mining industry doesn't exist, it's not very strong now, but anyway. Let's look at some of the references in, in, in some of these articles. Julie Sanders' adaptation and appropriation, uh, remediation, understanding new media, reworking of media, find references to Raymond Williams, Brian McFarlane, narrative, a shared aspect of uh, novels and film, Tony Bennett, Jane Woolcott, mobile and shifting nature of the cultural ideological business that has been conducted around by means of and through them. Uh, only in translating Calabar by the Brazilian scholar do we find references to translation studies. Aro de Campos and Anthropophagy, Transhistoricization, and references to Doug Robinson, Maria Timoshko, Carol Meyer. Julie Sanders' adaptation and appropriation has become already, I think it was published some 10 years ago, has become one of the classical works in the area, referred to by a large number of articles. Julie Sanders herself refers to Deheda. I won't go through all the quotations. Foucault, the, what is an author? The uh, author function changing over time. Roland Barthes, the death of the author. Intertextuality of Julia Kristeva. Hillis Mirror's chain of presences, parasitical presences, echoes, allusions, guests, ghosts of previous texts. Jeanette's hypertext. T.S. Eliot reworking of texts from the past, 
Harold Bloom's Anxiety of Influence, and Charles Darwin, of course, uh, Adaptation of Species in, the same, in a similar way, texts, university departments must adapt to new circumstances. Well, one of the points I would like to make is that adaptation studies is often monolingual, and translation can be an aporia, and adaptation has not yet developed its own theoretical framework. I would like to go into this particular element in much more detail about the aporia of translation in interlingual studies. I can just give one example from this pilot study by Dushka Radosavlijevich in her study on translating the city, a community theater version of Wim Wenders Wings of Desire in Newcastle upon Tyne. Quoting, having briefly considered hiring a translator for the original screenplay, eventually we re realized the wonders of contemporary technology and derived the first version of our script by simply downloading the subtitles from a DVD. Well, simple. Easy, no questioning whatsoever of the translation process, the quality of the subtitles, etc., etc. Quite shocking to Monsieur Gombier, it seems. Sorry? Not surprised. Not surprised. Well, uh, let's see who has, let's, let's just look, look for, uh, let's just look for a few minutes at a familiar figure to most of you, I'm sure, Lawrence Venuti who I discovered has been working and writing in the area of adaptation, translation, and critique in the Journal of Visual Culture in 2007. Let's look at what Venuti says here. Venuti criticizes the lack of theoretical basis of much work on film adaptation. The idea of intertextuality is too vague. He also says that there's a tendency for uncritical bias either in favor or against the film version. Uh, Venuti uses Patrick Catrice's concept of semiotic and pragmatic norms, and Turi's acceptability and adequacy as a means of defining equivalence. And then Venuti goes on to develop the wider concept of interpretant, which he divides into two areas of formal interpretants, structural correspondence between the adapted materials and the plot details, particular style of director or studio, or concept of genre that needs, necessitates a manipulation or revision of the adapted materials. Then he talks about thematic interpretants, which are codes, values, ideologies. They may include an interpretation of the adapted materials that has been material that has been formulated elsewhere, morality or cultural taste shared by filmmakers and used to appeal to a particular audience, or a political position that reflects the interests of a specific social group. Well, Venuti, we find, has been making a contribution to the area, and I propose that uh, adaptation studies is an area where translation studies can grow Prior provide support, as we find uh, uh, in Venuti's article. There are publications, courses, sites, lists, of course, which I propose translation studies scholars should work on and in. If we look at the editorial to adaptation in film and performance, uh, written by Richard Hans Katja Krebs, who published a book on translation, adaptation of German theater in Britain in the first years of the 20th century with uh, Saint Jerome. The, the uh, offer and welcome is there. For the newly emerging discipline of adaptation studies, this journal, Adaptation in Film and Performance, 
hopes not only to provide a forum of discussion of adaptive practice, but also, importantly, new stimuli and impulses. By turning, for example, to translation studies as a closely re related field of inquiry, we hope to see the beginning of a constructive relationship that will further our understanding of the creatively, ideologically, politically and socially charged process of rewriting and reshaping all that is adaptation. Well, uh, the offer is there, so I propose that this is one area uh, which translation studies has a lot to offer and uh, one area which I propose uh, 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 translation studies should play an active part in. So I don't know, I hope I've uh, made some points to open up to uh, discussion. <laughs>